Hello everyone. I'm here to explain what our latest course on model-based development is all about. So if you're someone who has no idea what model-based development is, then um, I'm just going to take you through the notions of it. I'm going to explain why is it that ideally you should be looking at this as a career option and um, how do you actually develop the skill sets that the uh, automotive companies look for. Um, what exactly is model-based development? So to put it very simply, model-based development is the whole process. It's a, it's a sort of systems engineering where we use one-dimensional models to design, simulate, analyze, and test systems. So uh, when I say system, what I mean is uh, this could be any product. Um, it could be a manufacturing line or it could even be um, a concept or, or some uh, you know process that you're trying to put in place. And the key word here is that we use 1D models. So now a lot of you would be very familiar with the way of using 3D models. So you, you've heard of um, 3D modeling, uh, CAE and CFT. So now what model-based development tries to do that is it, it tries to do literally the same thing, but it uses 1D models. So now 1D models are basically mathematical models. So don't get um, afraid because you're seeing the word mathematics over there. Um, 1D models are usually GUI based, which means uh, they are far more easier than 3D modeling. So if you want to model an engine, all you have to do is probably drag and drop some blocks and call this a cylinder and connect some arrow marks like this. So then this becomes a cylinder into which air comes, air goes out. You just enter some um, properties of air, how much volume comes in and your engine is done. So now this is one major advantage that the 1D modeling has because to do any kind of a simulation at a very rudimentary level, all you need to do is just drag and drop elements and you would be able to have a working model. Whereas the same thing to do with 3D model, it's kind of going to take you quite a bit more than that. So now what are the application areas of model-based development? So recently, any kind of a product development, it starts with model-based development. So the companies are shifting over to uh, model-based development, we call it MBD. Uh, a lot of, lot of companies are kind of adopting this as the uh, de facto standard with product development because of the advantages that it adds. And uh, the primary reason for that is we are looking at what is called as a cross-domain expertise, which is needed for any product development. So you take any car, you know for a fact that there is, I mean, a car like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you could even name one single component in there which doesn't need electronics for it to run. So which means an automobile, which is which is basically an automotive domain, um, it requires your mechanical engineers to come together, automotive engineers to come together, um, electronics uh, people, and then um, you have all these complex control systems, which means you need someone from the CSIT side. So there's there's a need for a lot of domain experts at every single stage. And what model-based development can do, as you would probably see in one of our sample exercises, is that it removes the need for domain experts at many stages. So what it means is that a mechanical engineer can develop a control system. A mechanical engineer can rapidly prototype a vehicle ECU and test it. He doesn't need to depend on an electronics or a computer science student for that. So which means uh, we usually use model-based development for pretty much the entire product development life cycle. So right from the concept design, the architecture, detailed design, integration, verification, validation, testing, you can do pretty much the entire product development life cycle, the PDLC uh, that we call. So the uh, entire V model of development, starting from requirements gathering, moving up to uh, testing validation, we can kind of do it using model-based development. And the domains that this is usually used for as you can probably like uh, see, like it starts from automotive systems and um, you even have business intelligence and financial services running on various models. So that's how powerful model-based development is. And what this means for you, the reason why you should learn model-based development is that the sheer amount of demand that you have for these skill sets. So let me, let me show you a small thing right now. Let me just uh, do a small search, right? And... Uh, let me use Naukri. So um, I'm here and uh, 
suppose I search for any 3D modeling tool, right? So you're a, you a fresher, so let me search for a CATIA fresher and look at the number of jobs that's available, 42. Okay, so let me remove the term fresher here and uh, let me again try searching for it. You get 4,817 jobs. And um, if I were to uh, further go back and if I were to like, uh, um, you know, kind of put it into uh, <clears throat> the the um, the starting level jobs, then just, I mean, still not bad. You have close to about 5,000 jobs, which is available. Now, the same thing, let me search for MATLAB, which is one of the primary tools used in model-based development. And you see here, there is around 19,000 jobs which are available in MATLAB which means the sheer amount of demand that you have for a tool like MATLAB Simulink, that kind of takes care of this. So you, you have a sheer amount of demand across different domains, right? Which means you can choose to have multiple career paths. So you could be a mechanical sciences student, you could kind of get into vehicle dynamics and model-based development would be a stepping stone for it. Or you could be a ECE student, you want to get into uh, working on um, autonomous driving systems or something, model-based development is what is going to take you there. So the amount of jobs that's available across different domains, that kind of should speak for itself. And like I said, it, it's also domain agnostic, which means um, you can be from pretty much any branch of engineering, even biotech for that matter, and you would still be able to uh, you know, use model-based development to build your career paths. So biotech, um, you want to do some uh, gene sequencing, you want to build some uh, biological models, you want to simulate uh, the human body or you want to build some testing equipment, you still have application areas in model-based development for it. More than good enough reason why you should probably think of model-based development as a career option. What will you learn in this course? The kind of modules that we cover. So as with any of our courses, we start with engineering fundamentals. So the engineering fundamentals is a completely optional course. So if you think you are you are kind of good with it, you could skip that, you could go in, but we do include a whole lot of engineering fundamentals starting from uh, basics of mechanical sciences, automotive, triple E, uh, communication. There's quite a lot of fundamentals over there which you could quickly go through. And these have been made in such a way that even someone who is not from that particular domain would be able to understand it. Then we move on to mathematical modeling, which is the crux of the whole thing. Um, don't worry if you're not good with mathematics. You don't have to be. We'll teach you how to still do some mathematical models. Then we go into control systems and control theory. Now, don't mistake me when I say this, but control systems, control theory is a huge, vast subject. And uh, over the last 10 years, we've been working on various capacities with control systems. And um, we are at a position where we can break this down into uh, easily accessible modules for you guys. So it doesn't really matter if you're a mechanical science student, we would be able to teach you advanced control theory because of the, uh, the kind of expertise we have in this domain. Then we move to model-based development. And finally, we wrap it up with the testing and validation because um, any kind of a job, it, it requires you to have all of these knowledge. So it doesn't really work if you have only theoretical knowledge about control theory, if you can't put it into practice, if you can't develop plans for it, 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 it is not going to work for you, right? And um, we teach you this primarily using MATLAB and Simulink. That's the primary tool that we use. And uh, I believe as students, you would have access to your uh, student version student version MATLAB Simulink. So you could kind of use that. And optionally, we also include three different modules. So the first one is from Ricardo. So Ricardo Wave Ignite. So um, these are again, industry standard 1D modeling tools, which are applicable for very specific projects. So a lot of OEMs and tier ones, um, they would they would want a model based development engineer who has got a specific um, skill set. So we offer you an option of either going with Ricardo systems, Ricardo wave or ignite, or you could choose for AVL, we can offer you AVL e suit, which is which is basically their uh, electric drivetrain development modules. And um, we can also offer you simulation X. So now these are optional modules you can choose if you want to uh, you know, take these things up. And um, now probably the biggest question, why learn from us and why not from the whole lot of other people who are there? Um, the first, first and, and 
probably the the foremost important reason i would i would say is this um we are not fresh entrepreneurs we are we are professionals with 20 years of industry experience myself my 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 other directors in the company each one with a specific domain expertise of not less than 15 years so we have expertise in uh, automotive control systems embedded system development autonomous system systems engineering cae cft product design and uh, that expertise is what is going to boil down to you when when you sign up for our courses we rather practice what we preach which means we don't just uh, we are not just involved with uh, teaching alone a tech is not a only uh, business vertical we are involved with a lot of engineering services for various oems and tier ones which means you know we can kind of like offer you live projects placements and internships and um, all of these things that you see here this is made possible because of the kind of work that we do for various oems and tier one suppliers and um, finally like we call ourselves as a job tech company we are not an ed tech company we are not purely an engineering services company we are a job tech company which means our our sole aim um, is to produce ready to deploy resources or or rather workforce rather than just trained resource so there's a there's a whole lot of difference so when we say ready to deploy it means we have we are involved in resource augmentation so whenever a company asks us for um, you know providing some trained resources who can be uh, deployed in projects um, we place our students in those companies we place our students for those requirements so the focus here is on the students being ready to deploy versus just being trained so ready to deploy is where you have some real experience and you can you join a company and you start working the next day and that is what industries are looking for these days and and it's more so in the post covid era now that you probably like uh, decided that um, mbd is the course for you um, the next pro- next big question on your mind is going to be um, which version of the course do i choose there are three different versions so which version do i choose so the first version is where you do the coursework and the project alone so now this is good for you if you're just looking at gaining some experience maybe you're in the uh, third or fourth semester and uh, you want to have an early start on things and you want to do this yes this is good for you but if you are someone who's in the uh, the final semesters maybe 7th or 8th semester and you also want to combine some meaningful internship to go with it you would probably choose the second option and um, the internships are paid right so <clears throat> so you do get paid a stipend for whatever work you do which means um we offer you live projects we offer you some meaningful experiences in the internship it's not a namesake internship where you do some old projects again and again and you submit it no it's not going to be like that and uh, the final final option is where um we also offer you a placement service which means um the moment you finish your coursework you finish your projects you finish your internship um you are on our payrolls and uh, when you are on our payrolls we have an option either to make you uh, work off off center which is basically uh, the rain lab offices or usually in many cases we also have an option of placing you at our client locations so choose the first option if you are in the third fourth semesters and if you are not looking for jobs especially um the second option if you are in the final semesters and you want to like have some kind of a uh, um I'm sorry about that and if you want to have some some uh, internships to go with it and um, the final option the placement guaranteed that is that is in case if you are already graduated or um, if you are in your final semester and you are looking to graduate in the next 3 months or something then choose the last option so um, that's it from my side thanks a lot thanks for watching this video and uh, anything you have please do get in touch with us